code. Okay, synchronous machine. So there are some parts, some elements inside the synchronous machine that Okay, the winding on the rotor, it, it, it's called a rotor. The winding on the, uh, on the rotor, uh, that's called uh, field winding. And it's supplied by DC, DC voltage, DC current, DC source. So uh, the, the flux that uh, cross the air gap, the air gap is uh, white area that is called air gap between the stator and the rotor generate voltage in the cord, induced voltage in the cord of armature. Then uh, rotor um, have a revolution rotate inside the stator, the voltage induced on, uh, on the coil uh, that are placed on the stator. And that we call it uh, armature uh, winding. So, and then the current goes to the power system, here is power system. And the DC current for the to, uh, rotor um, that uh, uh, supplied by another uh, circuit that we call it exciter. So exciter is connected to the rotor to provide the DC current. And the shaft that is uh, driven by a prime mover, that is a mechanical part, that uh, uh, provide the mechanical power, uh, which is usually a steam or hydro uh, turbine. We have two type of uh, rotors. Uh, one of them is called a round rotor. You can see the rotor is round without any salient, but another type is salient poor rotor. You can see salient here. So, these are two types of rotor we have, and it's important to know what is called. Uh, the direct axis is called D axis, and here it's called D axis. If you have the coil on the rotor, rotor, this one is perpendicular to this axis. We call it D axis. So 19 degrees lag will be Q axis, quadrature axis that we call it Q axis. These two axes are, are important to know the name. D axis and the Q axis are defined based on the uh, uh, rotor. So uh, they are perpendicular here and here. And we have the same thing for the salient. The axis here is the axis and the Q axis, 19 degrees lag. It's the behind, Q axis is behind the axis, 19 degrees. So for both types of uh, rotor, salient and the round rotor, the strong magnetic field links the stator coil to induce the voltage in the armature. So this magnetic field we have uh, induce the voltage on the armature. And the rotor is on, mounted on the shaft. That shaft is uh, run by the prime mover. And the coil, since we have three uh, phases in the uh, synchronous machine, the coil sides in uh, three uh, slots that are uh, 120 degrees apart. You can see A and A prime are here. B, B and B prime are here and C and C prime are here. The same thing for the salient pole as well, or salient rotor as well. So anyway, for frequency, uh, the frequency of the generated voltage, the induced voltage is related to uh, two parameters. The first one is P, that is number of poles. In the uh, round rotor, uh, it's two poles. 
and the salient rotor you have you can have many poles and the number of the uh, and the rotor is, rotor is, uh, speed in rpm rpm is uh, revolution per minute so these two parameters affect uh, the frequency of in, induced voltage for example if you have two pole if you have the synchronous machine with two poles and uh, if you want to have a voltage with 60 hertz the the rotor should rotate with 300 and 3600 in rpm however if you increase the poles if you want to have the same frequency you can decrease the the speed of uh, rotor so with uh, uh, with uh, higher number of poles you can decrease the speed of uh, rotor about the equivalent circuit we want to go toward the equivalent circuit for synchronous machine consider the following this figure we have three coil a b and c for each coil we consider as a inductance is a winding so for coil a we have this winding b and c and this one is the uh, the field that is uh, placed on the rotor so uh, we have uh, three winding for the armature that are uh, on the stator and the coil f is this one it is the coil f that is field winding that's uh, on mounted on the rotor so we have a three stationary armature because the armature winding mounted on the stator and the stator is a stationary um, part of the synchronous machine they are identical because they are for the uh, three similar phases however the coil uh, it's important to know the the coil a the axis of coil a do you remember previously we talked about the axis and the q axis base of the rotor uh, position but base of the uh, the the position of the winding a we define another axis here a axis and the b axis and the c-axis so the the phase difference the angle difference between a at axis and the direct axis that we call it d-axis this uh, angle difference is important parameter to tau d is the difference between two uh, two axes um, but remember a-axis is uh, determined based of the position of stator D axis based of the rotor position. So the difference is the today. So uh, for each coil A, B, C, we can define LAA. It's the self inductance of coil A, self inductance of coil B, and self inductance of coil C that are uh, similar. However, for the uh, mutual inductance between a and b coil and l a and b we have l self uh, mutual inductance between coil a and b mutual inductance between coil b and c and mutual inductance between coil c and a and we can show that they are same and it is negative ms so if we want to calculate the uh, the impedance inductance of the rotor uh, rotor winding because we have one winding on the rotor we want to know that uh, which uh, uh, type of uh, inductance we will have for the rotor winding for the rotor you can see here it's the rotor winding it's the field winding we can write these three equation between uh, rotor field or uh, um, excitation field, uh, you, you can see between A and F, 
is the mutual inductance. Between B is the coil P and the excitation uh, coil, there is another form. And between C and F, and all of them are, re are related to theta D because the rotor uh, have a revolution, rot rotor uh, rotate inside the stator. So it has the variation uh, value and it depends of the position of the rotor inside the in, uh, stator. That's why we have uh, sinusoidal function. We have cosine function uh, based of uh, theta d. And for itself, it has the uh, self-inductance that we call it uh, LFF. And uh, uh, flux linkage. Uh, do you remember related to transformer, we calculate the flux linkage and then derivative it, then we can calculate the voltage. We want to do it again for the synchronous machine. We'll start it with uh, link flux linkage for armature on, uh, on the stator. For example, for coil A, we can write uh, it's equals to AL, uh, self-inductance coil A, the current of coil A. The mutual inductance with coil B, the current of coil B. Mm, uh, mutual inductance between A and C and the current of C. And between uh, the field and the uh, uh, coil A and the current of uh, field. Uh, regarding to the previous slide, we have some uh, value for the inductance, for the self-inductance and mutual inductance. So we can write in this form. For each phase, lambda A, lambda B, and lambda C, if you write them, so you, you will have these three expressions. So for the, just for the field, you can write this expression as well. It's related to the current in uh, coil A, B, C, and itself. If you write the flux linkage uh, for three phase, A, B, and C, and we know that we are in the symmetrical system and uh, A, A plus A, B plus A, C is equal to zero. So in the balanced three phase, we can write three flux linkage in this way. So we can uh, substitute the, the currents. And we know that we are in the steady state condition and during the steady state condition, it's the uh, angular frequency of the rotor that is derivative of theta d. So we can write that theta d is equals to omega, is the angular frequency and theta d zero is the first position of the uh, in initial position of the rotor. And in this way, we can calculate uh, three expression for the uh, flux linkage for coil A, coil B, and coil C. You can see we have a, a constant value here, but this part that is related to rotor because rotor uh, rotate inside the stator, it is the, very, uh, it is the uh, uh, fluctuation uh, for the uh, flux linkage. So suppose that just for uh, coil A, in the coil A, we have wire, so we have a resistance and the voltage VA can be calculated based of flux linkage, based of the derivative we can calculate based of uh, lambda A. From the previous slide, lambda A is this one. And if you want to extract the voltage on the coil of A, you will have minus uh, negative R times IA and the derivative of lambda A. So you will have this expression. And we know that it's the cosine function and you have to make derivative and you will have the sine, uh, sine function. This part is called internal EMF, EA prime. 
that's the important we didn't have in the transformer. It's because uh, uh, induced voltage because of the rotation. And EMF, again, can be written in this way that uh, its absolute value is this one. That it's related to the current of the field winding. It is called internal EMF and the action of the field current cause uh, EA prime to appear across the terminal. However, for the convenience, uh, we can define uh, a new uh, angle. Before that, the initial uh, position of delta is called, uh, the initial position of rotor is called theta d0. So it's the initial position. However, we can define another angle, is delta. Delta is theta d0 minus 90 degrees. You know, uh, uh, before we use uh, d axis and a axis. If we lag it 90 degrees, we use uh, quadrature q axis. It's uh, more common to use Q axis as a reference instead of the D axis. That's why we use this angle. And if we use this expression for delta, we can calculate theta ID because the previous uh, expression, all of them were based on theta ID. So now we want to rewrite the formula based of delta instead of theta ID. So theta ID will be omega T theta d0. So we will have omega t delta 90 based of this expression. And we know that this expression, and we, if we insert it, uh, e prime a will be cosine function instead of the sinusoidal function you have seen before. And the terminal voltage of, for the uh, phase a will be uh, minus r times ia and this part is derivative of current and this part is the internal voltage we are using this formula to create equivalent circuit for the synchronous machine and we know that this uh, voltage and uh, we have the same thing for the coil b for the coil c um, for the phase b and for the phase c and the final equivalent circuit for each phase, we will have a, a voltage source here. For example, for uh, uh, phase A, it is internal voltage that is induced by the rotation of rotor inside the stator. And you, you have a resistance and the inductance. So it's the equivalent circuit. And you will have the same thing for uh, B, and C phases. And the, the current here, IA, IB, and IC, you can write in this way because we know the voltages and we can calculate the currents. And the currents has the phase angle lag uh, with respect to the voltage. Suppose that here is voltage of phase A the current of phase A uh, is uh, theta A that is behind the voltage because we have uh, R and L. If we had capacitor, uh, the current will be uh, forward in front of voltage. But with the inductor, the current will be behind the voltage based of the circuitry. And this theta A, it's called the phase angle of lag of the current with respect to um, E prime, E prime A. The calculation of field uh, circuit. Do you have a question? Uh, the memorize. So, um, I don't think so because uh, 
but uh, Thomas should decide. Maybe it's a very difficult, uh, very long equation. They will give you uh, the equation in the exam, but you have to check with uh, uh, Thomas because he is the main responsible. But uh, I don't think so for the long equation. Maybe uh, you can understand it in the example. When you have example, you can understand which type of equation you have to memorize. D axis, when, when you have a rotor, it uh, depends of the, the position of the coil on the rotor. Uh, one axis is defined as a Q axis when they pass the, um, the coil on the rotor, on the field winding. And it's perpendicular, it's a 90 degrees lead to Q axis will be D axis. It's that way. It depends on the, the position of the coil. Selected. Other question? Okay, we can go further. It's time. Oh, is there another question? Yes. The rotor, I can show you better. Here, can you see? It's the 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 winding of uh, uh, rotor, and suppose that it's the. Uh, when you have uh, the winding that uh, consider as a circle. And if you uh, consider an axis perpendicular that pass through the, uh, the origin of uh, the middle of the circle, we consider as a D axis here. Suppose that we have two axes here. Let's call it D, call it A. The position of the uh, field uh, winding is important how to select D axis and Q axis. Did you get it? Yes, and other picture? Here, you can see. It, it's, the, it's the D axis because of you, you have to here. Q axis and D axis. In the second picture, I didn't catch about D axis and Q axis. How we select them? You know, you, you yeah, in the in the rotor in the round rotor, mm -hmm. you have just two poles. So uh, you can you you will have just one axis because uh, because we have two poles in the round. But in the uh, salient. Uh, rotor, you have you can have many poles, and you have to consider one of them, because you know access is uh, not if uh, uh, it doesn't have any meaning. You use it for the mathematical calculation. You need to consider as a reference. So it depends on you which section can be considered as a reference. So mm -hmm. anyway, you have to consider one coil, mm -hmm. the rotor, and uh, consider. Q axis and D axis based of which winding do you consider? I see. Thank you. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. Any other question? So we can go further. So we're here. Yes, for the field current. So we want to do it the same, how to uh, work with the in, uh, inductance. Uh, 
for the uh, field winding. Anyway, you, we have a field winding here. So we can do it the same. For the flux linkage, we have write based of the, the currents uh, in uh, coil A, coil B, and coil C, and itself, the, the current inside the, uh, the field winding. If you write in this way, and we know that uh, this mutual inductance are changing with time because the rotor is changing. And you, you can see here. And if you write it, you can uh, rewrite again the flux linkage. And uh, this part is related to phase A, phase B, and phase C. And this one is for uh, self inductance of the field uh, in field winding. And if you use some uh, mathematical simplification, you can uh, have this final expression that uh, flux linkage is related to self inductance of the field winding, the current of field winding, and ID. That ID is related to IA and theta A. We remember uh, from the previous slides that we defined the ta A uh, between the D axis and the A axis. We defined the ta A. So we have ID. So in this way, we can uh, calculate the flux linkage of uh, field winding, the angle of uh, lag of A with respect to I prime. So reactance and uh, equivalent circuit. And it was our final expression for uh, terminal voltage for phase A. We want to uh, uh, extract the final equivalent circuit for phase A. According to this expression, we can have a circuit. We will have a uh, internal voltage, E prime, a, this one, you have resistance here, and this one is the inductance. It's the reactance, that's combination of self-inductance and uh, mutual inductance. And it is the final, it is the terminal voltage and the current. <clears throat> And you, uh, you consider here, the, uh, the terminal voltage will be VA and internal voltage and the currents. And according to this equivalent circuit, in the, since we are in the steady state condition, we can write in phaser form. And the, in the phaser form, the terminal voltage will be uh, VA, the phaser, so complex value, the angle here is zero. Uh, internal voltage here, uh, the absolute value EI with the angle delta is lead compared to uh, uh, terminal voltage and the current, it's, it's absolute value at its angle, it's lag. Uh, theta, uh, theta degrees uh, behind and the voltage terminal. And we can have uh, this equivalent circuit in the phaser domain. Internal voltage, resistance, inductance, terminal voltage, and the currents. If you take, uh, take more take on this formulation is the voltage on the uh, phase A, terminal voltage on phase A, and each part is related to uh, internal voltage that is called in different name. Sometimes we call it no load because when you have no load, we have no current. Uh, this voltage appear on the uh, terminal voltage. It's the voltage drop because of the resistance of the armature, resistance of the coil of stator, 
This part is related to uh, in self inductance of armature. And uh, this one is the mutual inductance. And we can write in this way. The final impedance Z will be R plus J XD. XD is called synchronous reactance because we know that Z is R plus J X and X is called reactance and uh, synchronous impedance ZD is defined this, this way. It's related to resistance of wire and the self inductance and mutual inductance of the coil, we can define uh, ZD as a synchronous reactance. With the synchronous reactance, we will have, uh, I want to show you a diagram of the voltage current, internal voltage. Based of this expression, you will have A, VA, the voltage on terminal, and this one is current, IA, that is lag compared to VA, the angle theta. And it's the voltage if you add voltage drop on resistance plus voltage drop on uh, reactance, synchronous reactance. So voltage drop on synchronous reactance, this part. And the final will be EI, that's internal voltage. So internal voltage is summation of the three terms. Uh, terminal voltage, voltage drop on resistor, and voltage drop on synchronous reactance. Summation of these three terms will be internal voltage. You can see here, according to circuitry. It's a phasor diagram of the synchronous generator. The next part is related to control. So do you have any question from the circuit, uh, equivalent circuit? So if not, before starting the new section, it will be the last section, uh, reactive and uh, active power control. So uh, it's better to have a short break that I need time to convert the file and then we'll be here in uh, 15 minutes, is it okay? Yep. Okay, so see you in 15 minutes.